Trust me, so many course creators are self-proclaimed non-techie folks just like you might be. And if they can do it, I know that you can do it too. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? <laughs> no way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. Have you ever let yourself consider and play with this idea of creating a digital course surrounding your knowledge or your expertise or just something you're passionate about, only to let that vision come crashing down when one word enters your mind? That word would be tech. Like how in the world do people handle the tech, especially when there are so many moving pieces to work through your first time around? I mean, let's think about it. There's putting together the curriculum, outlines and scripts, creating slides, recording the actual lesson content, creating any supplementary materials like worksheets or checklists, figuring out where and how to host your course, determining how to accept payment, delivering the program. I mean, it's all a lot. And the thing is, is it doesn't end with creating the course because then you need to consider where and how to put together your sales page and how to promote your course through emails or ads or social media or funnels that incorporate all of the above. These are all the little things that pop into our minds in the middle of the night, like making sure buyers get the materials they need when they sign up or what the thank you page should say when they check out. Is it a random template or do you need to customize the copy? Even my brain is spinning as I think through the different steps and levels of technology to work through, and I've created digital courses for years. So I want for you to know it's totally normal if those techie pieces make you feel a little dizzy, and it's honestly to be expected. I don't know one course creator who knew how to do everything before they put together their first digital course, not one single person. So much of it is learn as you go, just one step at a time. And while looking at the big picture is so exciting, it can also feel entirely overwhelming. And so my goal today is to help you take little actionable steps to break down a big project like this into small, doable, and hopefully even enjoyable pieces that you are totally capable of handling. Okay, now let's get into my top five tech tips for you to keep in mind as you dive into creating your amazing new digital course. Thanks to Gusto for supporting the Gold Digger podcast. Gusto offers modern, easy payroll and benefits to small businesses across the country. They were even named Best Online Payroll by PC Meg. Get three months free when you run your first payroll at gusto.com slash gold digger. Thank you to Gravy for supporting Gold Digger. Gravy offers a failed payment recovery service for subscription or membership-based businesses to recover the relationship and your revenue. Get a free revenue consultation and 25% off your first month of their signature service at jennalovesgravy.com. I just want to remind you that just like anything else that's a new process for you, it's easiest to start with what you already know. Where does your confidence lie in this idea? That's where you need to begin. Since doing something new can often feel like a challenge to your confidence, let's begin where it feels most natural. Now, while it's tempting to just hit record, I wouldn't recommend jumping in and trying to record your course without preparation, using just the information off the tip top of your head. Like, let's be honest, you're likely going to forget some important pieces or be frustrated trying to figure out a new recording system. And all of that stress will absolutely mess with the vibe and affect how you'll teach and communicate your course content. So instead, start with what you know, which is likely the information that you want to share with others inside of your program. Begin with what I call a brain dump, where you take all the information in your brain on the topic that you want to teach on, the steps that you've taken to get yourself or someone else results, the mistakes you've made, the strategies you've implemented, write it all down, like get it all down on paper, or type it out in a doc just to collect your thoughts around the topic at large so that you can start to build out your course curriculum. I remember when I created my first course, my mom, who was a nursing instructor for decades, said to me, 
uh, Jen, are you sure you know how to build out a curriculum? And while I didn't actually have formal training in it, I learned how to reverse engineer my process in a way that built step by step strategies. And trust me, I've totally refined my process over time. So whenever I create a course or resource, I always start with the end result. And then I lay out the three to five steps that it takes for me to get to that result. That becomes the course promise and the main modules for me. If you want to listen to an in-depth explanation on exactly how to do this, head back to episode number 257 or go to jennacutcherblog.com slash reverse. That's jennacutcherblog.com slash reverse. And that will help you immensely when it comes to reverse engineering. So the place to begin is in getting all of the education, the stories, the steps down in writing, in the very least, a rough outline. Sit with this outline for a few days, really look at it and make sure the steps progress to help someone get to the end result. For some, an outline with the main ideas is enough to guide them into the next phase of course creation. But if you want more in-depth guidance or notes as you record, like I do, then you can write bullet points or even full out scripts that you can read off of as you record your modules. Once you have your outlines or scripts done, move on to the next thing, which is likely moving to the visual side of your course planning how you will shoot that content, or if you're like me, creating visual slides to go with your lesson content. See, all in all, it's really just a few steps that you can take one at a time to get your course prepped, laid out and recorded. And I wish it were as easy as I just said, but here's what happens. So often we look at the final product of someone else's and think, whoa, that looks like a ton of work. Where do I start? And the answer is start with what you already know, break it down, focus on that end result and keep moving forward and chipping away at the next thing. And then the next thing, one item at a time until it's ready to go. Now, I'm going to dive into this in a little bit as well, but the best part of digital courses, you can change them. Keep in mind that nothing is set in stone. Like we're constantly adding and tweaking and re-recording pieces of our courses to keep them current and up to date. Many of my programs are on their second, third, or fourth iteration, and every single time they get better. The biggest thing to remember is this isn't permanent. You can change and evolve and grow, and you should. Like That's kind of the beauty of this world, and with technology, that can support us. And while it can be a heavier learning load up front, it also allows us this amazing flexibility later on down the road in case something changes or new info becomes available that you know would be important for your students to have. So go into this knowing that this is just version 1.0. Okay, so now that we've got some of the basics out of the way, let's dive into the tech. So tip number one is do not overcomplicate any of the pieces. The thing about courses is that people just want an end result. The features of your course are mostly important to you, and it's our human tendency to overcomplicate everything. But I want to give you permission to start small and start simple. When it comes to tech, your decisions do not need to be fancy. You don't need to invest in the most pricey gadgets or choose the most complicated means. This means I am giving you full permission to start with what you've already got. You likely don't even need to buy one piece of equipment or hire a video team or hair and makeup professionals in order to record your content. As a matter of fact, you can absolutely record a baller digital course with just your computer, headphones, and a couple pieces of software that are likely already on your computer or that you can download for free straight from the internet. Seriously. There are a few programs that you can use like QuickTime to record your content, or you can even use Zoom to record everything. All you have to do is start a meeting where you are the only person present, make sure the meeting is being recorded, and either talk on camera for the talking head effect or share your screen in order to record any slides that you might be using. If you mess up, don't feel like you need to start the recording over, just keep it rolling. Pause, take a breath, and then continue on where you left off. Most computers have some sort of video editing software like iMovie for MacBooks where you can later go in and easily just clip out the mess ups. Now, if you're using slides and are reading from a script, you don't want your script to show up on the computer screen as you share your screen on the recording. So you can simply pull up your script on your phone or an iPad or another tablet to read from as you click through your slides. This is actually my personal method and it works super well for me. It helps to keep my courses fluff free and step by step. 
And it also means that I can easily edit, add, or remove pieces without having to get camera ready or hire a camera crew to record, meaning our courses are updated more frequently and way more easily. You can even go old school and print out your script or outline, like figure out the method that will help you personally deliver your content in the easiest format. And the best part is, is that it's going to look different for everyone. Oh, and speaking of slides. Okay, so there are plenty of ways to design your course slides. Please don't freak out when I say the word design. Slides are just a piece to accompany what you are saying and help reaffirm the main points. So I promise this part of the process can be so quick and easy, even if you have zero graphic design skills, thanks to the use of templates. So when I first started out, I hired a designer to create me one deck of slide designs for Keynote. And then I went in and I tweaked and tailored them for all of my courses. So I paid a one-time fee and then had a bunch of slide options that were cohesive and on-brand and easy for me to plug my info into and use inside of my programs. I also love using the free design platform Canva. We literally use it every single day in my business. It is super simple and there are tons of stylish and free slide templates that you can use and customize. You can easily drop in your content, swap in your own branding colors, fonts, and images. Even software like PowerPoint or Prezi have templates that you can customize, although they're a little bit more simple and a little bit more corporate in terms of look and feel. I personally love Canva. That's C-A-N-V-A. They have a ton of options from more corporate and structured to more fun and creative slide templates. If you're opting to go the slides route, it can be really easy to fall into this black hole of thinking you need to create a million and one slides for every little thing you're saying in a lesson. And while you want the slides to be effective visual aids, keep in mind that you can always share your scripts or your outline notes with students so that they have the written notes to refer back to. Your slides should just have the main points, illustrations, and help someone who's watching keep up with the content that you're sharing. They should be super simple, digestible, and cover the main pieces of what you're teaching on. Your slides aren't the meat of the lesson. They're more like the side salad accompanying what you're sharing. So you're going to be speaking as you share the slides, explaining the lessons in more depth and detail. A few ways to make sure you're not creating too many or too busy slides is to keep them to just one to two slides per minute of spoken teaching. Make sure there's plenty of white space on each slide, aka less than half the slide should have words on it. I've seen slides that are so busy where it's like you can't even ingest any of that content. And so you want to make sure that the slides are really simple. The words there are easy, large enough for people to skim through and read. And most importantly, they should be listening to what you're saying as the slide appears. So here's what we include in our courses. So we have the video with our slides. We have the audio only file. So people can literally just listen on the go if they just want to catch the audio. Then we also include the transcription or the script for each lesson so that regardless of how a student likes to learn, either by watching, listening, or reading, all of those options are available and support individual learning styles. So now that you've prepped the back end, let's talk about recording. This part freaks so many people out. The second tech tip is to record in the style that is most appealing to you and appropriate for your content. How do you feel most comfortable delivering your content? Like day to day, get super honest with yourself about what excites you. A lot of times we want to mirror those that we've learned from, especially if you've taken a digital course before that has gotten you results. But what you want to do is ask yourself which approach is easiest for you to show up and really deliver. So when I created my first digital course ever, it was honestly audio only. Like I was so freaked out about the tech. I didn't know how to screen record. I didn't know how to make slides. I literally spoke into a microphone and hit record. And it was basically an early version of this podcast when I think of it. Of course, my courses have gotten a lot more refined over the years. But at that time, it was the way that I could deliver with confidence. So get honest with yourself, like which way feels most natural to you? That means if you would rather speak on camera and the content is easily consumable for students this way and you don't want to make a single slide, then don't get on camera, like work your magic, do your thing. There are no rules saying that to have a successful digital course, you have to have a hundred plus slides. 
Now, at the same time, if showing up on your screen makes you feel really nervous or you overthink what you'd wear or how you look or how you need to be sitting and you'd rather just sit back and use a script in slides, then by all means do that. Like both methods work and both can be super effective. Your comfort level will come through the speakers and the screen. So if you're forcing yourself to do it in a way where you'd really prefer to do it in another, it'll be loud and clear to your students that you're not feeling comfortable and you're not showing up as your most authentic self. If you take one thing from this episode today, let it be this. Don't ever feel like you need to do something a certain way because someone else did it. It's way more important to know your strengths, your audience, and your own comfort level and teaching style. Heck, you might get into the recording process and realize, yikes, this is so not for me. And that's totally fine too. However, that doesn't mean that your materials aren't worth sharing. It just means a different media might be more your speed, like an ebook or a digital guide that your audience can download. Ask yourself how you can show up as your best self and deliver the materials most effectively and then follow that method. I know for me, I've taken so many different courses over the years. Some of the instructors have like these incredible sets and full teams and microphones and makeup and outfits. And then some courses are literally just like bare bones. Here's step by step with slides. And it's so funny because I learn from both of them. And neither one is better than the other. I find myself really just listening to the content. So I, if I could just take audio, like that would be great for me. But I want for you to know, like you can start in the most approachable way and your confidence is going to grow over time. So just know, again, nothing is set in stone, but you want to start where the lowest barrier to entry for you starting lies. If you sell digital products, especially if you offer a payment plan, it's important that you have a system to recover failed payments and preserve the relationship with your customer. I started working with Gravy years ago for this exact reason. Gravy offers a failed payment recovery service for subscription or membership-based businesses. With a team of U.S.-based retention specialists that will contact your customers within hours after a failed payment, Gravy is going to recover the relationship and your revenue. Gravy can recover up to 80% of your revenue and get your customers back on track and it's It's a great way to protect and increase that customer's lifetime value. In the last six months alone, Gravy has recovered over $28,000 and saved 638 customers in my business. Contact Gravy at jennalovesgravy.com to find out how to pull your failed payment data, discover best practices, even if you don't sign up, and compare your metrics with industry standards. And for those who do choose to sign up, Gravy is offering 25% off your first month of their signature service, Gravy Recover. That's jennalovesgravy.com. Okay, so are you ready for a spooky story to tell around a campfire? Okay, imagine this. You're an entrepreneur and you have to run payroll, and you don't have a system to help get it out. Pretty scary, right? Well, never fear. I've teamed up with Gusto, and they're offering you three months for free when you run your first payroll at gusto.com slash golddigger. Gusto is easy online payroll benefits and HR built for modern small businesses with all the management tools you need in one platform. Gusto automatically files and pays all state, local, and federal payroll taxes, plus the fast, easy-to-run payroll includes W-2s and 1099s for your team, as well as tools to manage health benefits, 401ks, and more for almost any budget. On average, running payroll with Gusto takes just 11 minutes, and you'll get three months for free when you run your first payroll at gusto.com slash golddigger. That's three months absolutely free when you run your first payroll at gusto.com slash golddigger. Okay, third, after you've recorded your content, it's time for you to pick a place to host your materials. So this is a piece of the puzzle that can often feel wildly intimidating and leave you super frustrated with a million internet tabs open and a lot of confusion. And I know there are tons of digital course hosting platforms out there, and you could fall into months and months of researching them all and comparing the pros and cons. And while I do want to champion you to inform yourself and to make an educated decision on what will fit your needs best... Also realize that this is something that tends to hold people up for far too long. And again, it doesn't have to be a permanent decision. So a few things to look at to make a wise and quick decision are cost. 
Is the investment something that you're going to be able to make back once you start making course sales? Two, ease of use in that you want to know that this is a platform that seems straightforward enough and has great technical support in case you do get stuck. Three, what other features does it have that could consolidate your needs and simplify your processes? And four, What do others recommend in your industry or circle? If you know something has worked great for someone in your field, it likely might be a good option for you too. So full disclosure here, I have been with Kajabi since day one, like literally day one, I've built out my entire library of courses on their platform. It's been my one and only this entire time. I'm a huge fan of how easy it is to create, build, sell, and serve up a course. I literally log in almost daily and I absolutely love it because it's super intuitive. Like it is a platform built specifically for online course creators needs and their support team is incredible. Like if we ever have questions, they are on the ball, they respond right away. And plus, I know that they have packages that allow you to house things like landing pages for your course, as well as your email list. So you can actually consolidate all of those pieces and have them operating in one place, which can simplify a ton of the starting pieces that you're going to need anyways. So obviously it's clear. I am obsessed with Kajabi. (laughs) Granted, it's the only one I've experienced with, but I have been completely satisfied with them for the past six plus years in offering digital courses. And I haven't felt the need to explore other options. So if you are ever curious or you want to know like, Jenna, what do you use for X, Y, or Z? I recommend all of the things on my page. It's jkfaves.com. That's jkfaves, F-A-V-E-S.com. And I have everything that I use listed out from course creation to email list building to social media strategy, like literally everything. Plus, I've gotten a ton of exclusive discount codes waiting for you. So that's jkfaves.com. Now, here's the thing. Regardless of what you choose, simply making a choice, knowing that you can always switch later if you need to is the best thing to keep in mind. So Kajabi is my choice, but from what I hear, Thinkific and Teachable are also super solid options that are really easy to use. And really the main point here is to just pick something, move forward, learn this system, and then duplicate as you grow and build. It's kind of sort of like this whole like teach a man to fish thing. If you can learn how to set up one course, you'll be able to repeat the process for future offerings or any changes that you need to make to course number one down the road. My fourth tech tip for creating online courses is to realize and understand that everything is editable. Now I touched on this a little bit earlier, but it is worth mentioning again that you can literally always edit audio, video, and slides at any point in time and re-upload a refreshed, updated version. Literally, we were doing this just hours ago in one of our programs. So you can re-record, swap things out, delete what no longer works, add on helpful materials, consolidate information. And I know that the temptation of waiting and primping and perfecting and trying to make sure your offer is absolutely perfect before releasing it out into the world. I know you feel that way, but There's something entirely freeing in realizing that nothing is perfect. And that's the beauty of it. And while I pride myself on working to put together exhaustive, effective lessons inside of all of my programs, you better bet that I am also a human being. And I found things like typos on slides or little mistakes here or there. And we've had to go back in and edit them and change them. But what I will tell you is that done is always better than perfect. And people care more about the message than the method. So don't hold yourself to this impossible standard that is only going to paralyze you from actually making progress. With my courses that cover things like social media strategy, there are constant evolutions happening and new strategies arriving on the scene and best practices being introduced. We are constantly tweaking, editing, adding, deleting, and And honestly, that's the beauty of a digital course because it's hosted in this digital medium. It's not a fixed place like a book or a magazine article. It's able to evolve with the times, which means you're able to serve and support your students for longer and keep making your programs better. Now, if you want a pro tip, break up your program so that it's easier to edit in the future. When you create with this notion that potential change is possible if needed, you can create your program in a way that will save you from having to start all over again anytime something changes. 
People record digital courses with broken up modules or deep dive lessons because they're smaller thematic pieces that students can easily browse and work through one at a time at their own pace and based on what they need. And here's an added benefit of building your program that way is that as the course creator, if you need to change a few things in one or two lessons down the line, you can easily re-record just one lesson or add in supplementary lessons that students will have access to. And finally, my last tech tip is to simplify your launch tech. Truly, 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 all you need to launch your course is a sales page and the willingness to continue sharing that goodness that it can deliver students. Your course hosting platform may very likely and should hopefully provide a landing page for you to set up your sales page. Or you can create a fresh page on your website where you share that end result that you landed on for a student who's going to take your course. And then you can share the problems your course solves for your target audience and then link to the opportunity for them to purchase. Now, my first course I launched with nothing more than a Squarespace landing page and Kajabi. I posted about it a few times, took calls with anyone interested, and booked 25 students. And it was just me, myself, and I. And it was an incredible launch without bells or whistles or really much of a plan. Now, I know that in the online course space, there's a lot of concentration on massive launches with webinars and ads and email sequences and social media pushes. But if you ask me on your first time course launch, especially, I want for you to feel free to play and experiment with things that interest you, but don't feel required to do everything that everyone else is doing. In fact, just like I said, to record in the way that makes you feel most comfortable, I want for you to launch in the way that feels most comfortable to you. Start small, get people results, grow your confidence, and you can always scale in the future. So you literally just need a place to explain your course and collect payments. And the place that you host your course should hopefully be able to do those things. Once you have that spot, share where your audience is. That might mean you go live on Instagram to share the results your course can get people, or it might mean trickling out a few emails about your course to your email list. Or maybe it's simply pre-recording a five minute video about your course that also shares three easy tips your audience would want to hear that you can put on your sales page. There are literally so many like tiny lift ways to launch that don't require funnel technology or paying for ads or having a bunch of moving pieces going all at once. Now, at the end of it, I want for you to remember this. You are in control here. This process is one filled with learning. And if you're setting out to be a teacher or an expert, also commit to being a student and learning this new world, this industry and how to navigate it. I am constantly learning and tweaking and refining, and I'm committed to always being poised as a student in order to continue getting better. You don't need to do what everyone else is doing. Your course can absolutely look different. Your launch can look different. The only thing that matters is that you're able to get someone results and deliver your content in a way that helps, serves, and solves problems for your ideal clients. That's it. However you get from A to Z, whether it's with the barest bones tech possible, or you learn a bit more than you expected to along the way, which by the way, is going to happen regardless, the end goal remains the same. Get your knowledge and get results for your people. The end. How you get there can be as simple as you want it to be, but I just need you to start. Begin with what you know, start getting your knowledge down in a way that can help your audience and go from there. Trust me, so many course creators are self-proclaimed non-techie folks just like you might be. And if they can do it, I know that you can do it too. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Gold Digger Podcast. If you are tuning into this episode and you've never taken the time to leave us a review, what I would love to know is what would you create a course on? What is your passion? What is your expertise? What is the topic you're dying to get people results with? Leave that in the review so that I can see just how incredible and diverse and dimensional this audience is. And heck, I would just love to hear from you. I am so excited to see you step into this new role if you're ready for it and to get your knowledge out into the world. Until next time, Gold Digger, keep on digging your biggest goals. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? 
you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 